I usually don't do movie reviews or discussion. However, today I am making an exception because of how much I'm about to glaze this movie. But first, obligatory intro, leave a like and a comment on this video, share this video with some other fans of Transformers or anyone interested in the film. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and check out my link tree where you can find my Patreon, Ko-Fi, Instagram, and TikTok. That would be super cool of you. Also, my commissions are open. What? Okay, let's get into the video. I've been a Transformers fan for a few years now, but I hyper fixate and so it feels like it's been my entire life. I have a pretty good knowledge of the series, the fan content, the memes, and the figurines, and I even have OCs. That being said, the IP has had its fair share of crappy entries. There's another series I'd like to add, but I have a feeling that I may create an enemy of a huge chunk of the Transformers fandom, so you'll just have to sit and wonder what that could be. Anyways, I went and saw an advanced screening of this film September 14th in 3D, which was kind of an accident, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. I considered leaving a spoiler warning on this, but the movie is literally a prequel to the entire franchise, but it does have some bits that I didn't know, so I'm going to assume I'm either not a super fan or there's new stuff that's been added. So consider this the spoiler warning because I'm going to go through this in sequential order. The film opens on Orion Pax breaking and entering to find out more information about the fallen primes and the whereabouts of the Matrix of Leadership. He gets caught and after a fun exploration and introduction of his character and morals, we're introduced to D-16, or as we traditionally know him, Megatron. The two work in Energon Mines under the leadership of Alita One, and they share a very strong brotherhood together. During a mining job, a cave falls in on itself and we get to experience one of the first moments of Orion showing leadership and compassion towards his fellow bot when Jazz gets his leg crushed and Orion stays behind to save him. D-16 following his lead, they get him out and they survive. The whole thing causes Darkwing, who I assume is like some sort of project manager or something, but anyways, he, he fires Alita and she storms off. Skip a little down the road, and Orion wants to prove that miners are more than meets the eye, and basically tricks D-16 into joining this race that I forgot the name of after he initially declined. They managed to do well until the very end, where they overestimated their success and went from second to last place in a matter of seconds after Orion went back to help D-16, who suffered a small injury during the race. Later, the Cybertronian leader, Sentinel Prime, who is secretly a bad guy, visits them in the infirmary and invites them to his fancy place that I forgot the name of. But Darkwing finds them shortly after and ends up sending them to a waste disposal facility where they meet B-127, or just B. Obviously, this is Bumblebee, but that won't come till later. From here, they find old coordinates from the late Primes, and after a little bit of convincing, they decide to escape with B, to which they run into Alita and accidentally send a shipment train off track that leads them to the surface and shortly after, to the Quintessons. But they hide from them at first, and they find the location of the coordinates but no Matrix. They awaken Alpha Trion, who survived the battle, which was actually an attack from Sentinel Prime, as a result of a deal he made with the Quintessons. Orion and Pals have a hard time with this, since they realize their leader is actually a traitor who stole their T-Cogs at birth and forced them all to work for something he was giving to the Quintessons. They do end up seeing this happen with their own optics, leading to Alpha Trion granting them all T-Cogs from the previous Primes. A small battle ensues, and the gang learns how to transform. Alpha Trion falls in battle and the gang escapes, only to be quickly cut off and found by another group. They were some sort of guard, I can't remember the exact name. And this is when we meet the iconic trio, Starscream, Shockwave, and Soundwave. Which was a pleasant surprise because I don't remember ever seeing them in the trailer and so I started jumping and screaming in my seat. Starscream is my absolute favorite, I literally love him in every iteration and the fact that he's voiced by Steve Buscemi in this adds a whole new layer of awesomeness to it. Side note, everyone killed it with the voice acting. Absolutely fantastic job to everyone, especially Chris Hemsworth, because I was really worried about him being Optimus since Peter Cullen is the only Optimus I could ever approve of. But Chris did a swell job and I'm very happy with the result. Like, he actually sounds like a plausible young Optimus. Anyways, this is the first time we see Starscream and Megatron, like, duke it out. And Megatron kind of makes himself the leader that the guard happily follows, only to get clapped by Sentinel and his cronies, like, two seconds later. <laughs> The group gets split up, and while Sentinel plays mental games and traumatizes D-16 more, Orion and Alita rally the miners and prepare for an attack on Sentinel to avenge the Fallen Primes and remove the evil from power. After some pretty awesome battle scenes, D-16 goes to kill Sentinel and Orion tries to save Sentinel from death, ultimately getting blasted into the abyss. <laughs> 
D16 initially goes to save Orion, but makes the decision to become Megatron and let him die. He then kills Sentinel Prime while Orion is found by the Matrix, becomes Optimus Prime, and returns to stop Megatron. Megatron puts up a good fight. Optimus uses his super cool axe and ultimately wins the battle, making Megatron surrender that fight, take the guard, and leave Iacon. Shortly after this, all the citizens are given a TCOG and Optimus makes Alita basically his second in command, and the film is basically over. There's a small post credit scene showing the Decepticons branding themselves and becoming the Decepticons, and now we have to sit and wait for the inevitable sequel. Here's a little break to remind you all that if you're enjoying this video, leave a like and be sure to subscribe and check out my Patreon. I also take commissions through Ko-Fi and Instagram, so don't be afraid to reach out. The film is not only visually stunning, perfectly paced, beautifully written, but it also shows the way that two people from the same place can go in such different directions for the same cause. Megatron made his moves based on anger, betrayal, and hurt, whereas Optimus came from a place of justice, compassion, and hope. And we get to see that unfold in real time. This is by far the best Transformers film I have ever seen, and it is a great experience for newbies and longtime fans. While the film is rated PG, the film actually portrays itself as PG-13 and genuinely enjoyable for everyone. There's no, this is for kids, this is for adults, no. This film is for the fans, new and old. It's an overall masterpiece and I hope and pray it receives a sequel and more to come. Also, side note, the visuals of this film in terms of the character design is based on the IDW and Generation 1 series. So all the characters look how they looked in the original cartoons or how they look in the comics, which is fantastic. Michael Bay, you don't know what you're doing, but I think he, he was a producer on the film, so good job. <laughs> Thanks for funding this amazing project, I guess. <laughs> As of the time I'm writing this, I'm going with a friend to see the film in 4D because of the train scene that felt like a lot like a Polar Express scene where it becomes like a roller coaster for a brief period of time. And you know, even though I knew exactly how everything was supposed to play out, I still felt the emotions of the betrayal, the joy, the dread, and even the suspense of who will win, Megatron or Optimus. This film is a powerful asset in the franchise and I hope to see more. I really don't have much to say that isn't praise. My only complaint is that I want more Starscream, which I will happily fill the void with I think I'll just power through with some Starscream fan art and whatnot. Seriously, if the reviews of this film are bad and any other YouTubers say it's bad, they're tripping because the film is objectively amazing and a great watch. But anyways, with all that out of the way, let me know your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. Also mark your comments with a spoiler warning if it's something like really specific, just for courtesy. Otherwise, comment Optimus fine and while you're down there, leave a like and be sure to subscribe. Also check the description for my link tree to my Patreon, Ko-Fi, Instagram, and TikTok. I'd really appreciate it if you gave those a look. Otherwise, make plans to go see the film. We need this to be a box office smash hit because it deserves every penny and every ounce of love. Anyways, check out my other videos and until next time, let's roll the outro.